Okay, well, thank you very much. Glad to have everybody here today. I hope everybody is doing well and happy and all of those kinds of things. We've got students back on campus. I haven't ridden by campus, but I've seen a lot of people out running and jogging this week, young people, so I do know that they're back. So we are, we're hoping that that all goes smoothly. I think if, if the back to school goes, goes smoothly, that'll, that'll be one step closer for us opening back up. So that is, that is the goal to get, to get open. So I am, let's see. I want to share my screen here just to get going. This is a little different. I'm actually live on the web right now so that we can bounce around. It struck me as I was putting together a talk that since I'm talking about mail order plants, all of these places should be online. In addition to me talking about the plants, you may get me critiquing some of the websites a little bit because nursery people are terrible at selling plants. I do want to mention a couple real quick before I get going. You know, some of our local ones that probably everybody knows, but we get some of us here get so, so used to the fantastic plants that we have nurseries we have available, we forget that we have some of the best mail order places around. Plant Delights Nursery, of course, for, you know, mostly your perennials. We've got Camellia Forest for camellias and things like that. And Pine Knot Farms, just up a little bit north there in Virginia, but we like to claim them for our own in North Carolina. So we do have those here. And I will say, if Chris has not already put it in the chat, there, he will get you a resource to, um, to link to all the nurseries that I'm talking about. So you don't have to necessarily scribble down and, and get, get those. You'll, you'll be able to see them. You know, I was really, I found it interesting. Chris said he, it's been years and years since he's mail order plants. And that may be because he works here at the Arboretum and has other access to plants. And we do have so many great nurseries around here that they're in a need. But um, I do quite a bit, you know, even from back a long time ago when I'd order seed and such, I've been, I've been doing this. I am not going to, I'm not going to be talking much about like from seed places. I'm not going to talk a lot about things, places I have not ordered from. Everybody I'm talking about are people that I've ordered from in the last oh, four or five years at least. Because, you know, things change, places get sold, service goes up or down. So I wanted to make sure we had places that were, that were good. And I do want to point out that on, I won't do this on all these, but on some of these, like, like the Plant Delights website, you know, there's, you can shop for your plants, but a lot of them have a lot of other information on there. You know, like on Tony's here, this, you click on this, the more you know, and, you know, you can go to this perennial encyclopedia. Um, this is every plant that they have ever offered. So they have 60 plants per page and 100 pages. So, you know, that's, you know, 6,000 plants that they have information on. Now, a lot of them are not for sale, and I think they just put sold out if it's something that they don't offer anymore, but you can get great information on there. You know, so there's, there's wonderful, wonderful resources. Do not, if you're using, going to places, don't just take photos from them to use. 
many nurseries will gladly let you use their their images, especially if it's for an educational purpose. So ask them about that. Tony's is is one of the better websites. Plant Delights. These he works a lot with it. It changes often. Some of the ones we're going to see some that look like they are GeoCities hosted websites. They're kind of they're out there. But Tony is, of course, a great, a great supporter. And I love this down in this corner, the, this thing, if you stay on his website for a little while, it'll tell you what people have just, somebody just bought something. And I know I've been looked at that and thought, Ooh, I wouldn't mind one of those. <laughs> they know what they're doing there. Another local one, and I'm going to go from here, start going into kind of some of the woody plants is mrmaple.com. These guys, if you don't know the Nichols brothers, the, the Nichols boys, the Maple brothers, whatever you want to call them, seems like everybody knows them. You should get to it. They are absolute nuts about plants, especially maples. They grow, I don't know how many different maples, but they're really probably the best selection anywhere now for maples. They have expanded into ginkgos and conifers and other mostly woody plants. It's, you know, they keep, they keep going and buying, you know, new ones, new ones, new ones, new ones. I'm not buying, but offering new things. They're just too big of plant nuts to not. And it's great because we've, good grafters have, have gone by the wayside a bit. So it's nice that we have somebody who's doing that kind of work. And if you're, um, you know, if you're online, you should, you know, with social media, you should think about following them. They do a lot of posting. They do a lot of funny stuff. They're pretty fun. And again, they're, they're great supporters of the Arboretum as well. A lot of our, our recent maples have come from there. A lot of plants that we want grafted, we'll send to them to graft. I have to remember to ask for them back because they forget where they got all their plants sometimes, but they're always in good shape. They always do a, a great job and they're loads of fun. You you've, may have seen them out here in the past as well. Kind of one of the, the old school crew, for woody plants especially, although they grow a little of everything, is Forest Farm out on the Pacific, in the Pacific uh, Northwest. Forest Farm has been doing this for ages. You know, their, their print catalog, which I guess you can still get, wow, they've colored. It was never color before, but it was like the size of a novel. It was a big old heavy duty thing. And you know, they grow some of everything. Stuff that's really exciting, stuff that nobody in their right mind would want. Native, non-native, kind of a little bit of everything. And, uh, you know, they, um, they've always sent plants in great shape for me. And one thing I would hear people talk about is say, well, we don't, you know, we don't order plants mail order because they're so expensive. It's so expensive to have them shipped and it can be, I mean, it can, you know, another half again, the cost of your plants, but I can tell you after having known many, many mail order nurseries, nobody, nobody is making money on shipping. Everybody loses money on shipping. You know, the, the labor that's involved to, to ship your plants well, is a lot it, it costs a lot they're living plants you know people complain about how much it costs to get their plants shipped and you know they're shipping them they're asking for their plants in june july and august when it's you know 80 or 90 degrees here in the south uh, southeast so plants have to be shipped you know two day and that gets pricey but forest farm is, is really good they have just so many things to that, that 
they offer there that you can always find something, something good. And let me tell you, putting together this talk was not cheap for me. It got very expensive going through and, and pulling my favorite mail order nurseries. Coming back a little closer to the to us on the East Coast is Woodlanders down in Aiken, South Carolina. Um, like, like many of these places, they don't ship year round. So you can order now, but they don't ship until October 1st and they stop May 31st. Some places ship year round, some don't. Some say if you want it, you know, in the middle of summer here, you're going to have to ship it, you know, overnight or something like that to make sure it makes it through. But, you know, they, they're uh, always, always good to listen to what they tell you. Sometimes they'll say, we can ship it slower, but they know what the best thing to do out there. This was, Woodlanders was, was started by Robert and Julia McIntosh. Robert had been part of our master plan design committee here. He was, he lived in Raleigh. They were fantastic. So he, and he got with Bob McCartney, uh, who had been doing a lot of work with native plants. And so they partnered up and started uh, releasing plants. Now, many of these, these plants, these places you can visit, you can just stop by and visit. They're open year round or like plant delights opened on certain days. Don't just stop in at Woodlanders. You can, you can often visit if you get in touch with them. So by reservation only, unless something has changed there, you cannot go there and buy plants. They, just absolutely would not take your money for plants when you were there. You had to order it online. You could pick them up, but you had to order it online. And it didn't matter if you were Joe Schmo, who they had no idea who you were, or if you were J.C. Ralston coming down there to visit. They were not going to give you plants that hadn't been ordered ahead of time. They, it's Bob McCartney was quite a character. But this is a, the type of thing where you can go through and, you know, I know plants pretty well, but Enridera cordifolia, mm, don't know that plant. There's always new stuff. I don't know if I want to know it. Uh, it looks like it's, you know, maybe hardy here. But really, they grow stuff that nobody else does. And then they also grow things that a lot of other people do. But fantastic. Chris, I know you said that everybody had been muted, but if there are questions, please, you know, throw them out to me while I'm, while I'm doing this. I'm really just kind of talking through and I hate to, you know, not answer a question about a specific place or, or something like that. Go on. Now, one of my favorite plant people is is Ted Stevens. He's given talks for us plenty of time. He's been always been generous with our plant auctions and, and things like that. Uh, Ted was one of the people who I was with on my on my first trip to Japan and I still still want to go back with him again because he was he was so so much fun. He and I share a love of osmanthus, so we're always trying to get new osmanthus into each other's hands. But he's got he's got great woody plants. Oh, look at these things. So much, so many good plants, so many good osmanthus. But he also he does perennials and some tropicals and, and things like that. In his nursery, he always has unusual things in there that he's building th building up uh, new numbers. And I've been getting them out here in the last few years, at least once a year. He was actually out earlier this summer. We went around in our masks and whatnot. 
getting cuttings of plants that, you know, new plants to put into production. So love, love having him out here and love uh, seeing these plants get out into cultivation through him. One of those places I forget about sometimes, Broken Arrow Nursery. They're an interesting place. They're up in Connecticut. Their propagators are fantastic. They grow a bunch of really unusual things and sell most of the mail order, but then they also, as things out grow too big and they haven't sold them, they plant them out in their field. And so a lot of times when I get designers out who are asking where to get, you know, large, unusual plants, I say, go to Broken Arrow Nursery and look at what they have in the field because sometimes they have just absolutely amazing things in big landscape sizes, but they also have small things that they can ship. And it's been a little while since I've gotten plants from them. Back in my, when I was young and naive and my trip to Vietnam was canceled, I decided that instead of that, I would just go ahead and make a drive up through the Northeast and, and visit some friends like uh, the folks at, at Broken Arrow. Boy, so much younger back in, March than I am now. I've been aged, but you can see they've just got all kinds of, of fantastic plants. I've never understood why so many places don't have any pictures of their plants, even if it's not a great picture. You know, it seems like you could go out and take a, take a picture. They do a lot of, if you like variegated, they got a lot of variegated plants. I don't know if they, how they, you can sort them. Oh, I guess just these but really good stuff. I love them. They're great. The owner, Richard James, has done a lot of work with, with mountain laurels. That's kind of where people know him from breeding mountain laurels and introducing them. But of course, they're in Connecticut. They don't really work, you know, work towards getting things that are, that are, you know, cold, I mean, heat tolerant. So you have to be careful about some of their stuff. Make sure you get things that will be heat tolerant because they are, you know, farther north. But they ship a lot of stuff to Long Island, which is zone seven. So they grow a lot of stuff that we can. Um, you know, great collections of maples and uh, all kinds of things. Really great nursery. Can't say enough good things about them. Now, another longtime friend of the Arboretum, Sistus Design Nursery, Sean Hogan is the owner. And they grow uh, a lot of mostly kind of plants that thrive in Mediterranean climates. So think the, the drier parts of the Pacific Northwest, the the southwest, you know, true Mediterranean places, a lot of the kind of the hardier tropical things. And they are, again, Sean is a great supporter of the Arboretum. Just, I think, two or three weeks ago, I was going through some images, probably for one of these talks, and I came across an image that I didn't show, I doubt, but it was uh, a Pittosporum, Pittosporum dalii from uh, New Zealand. And I thought, well, you know, it was one of those, I took the picture in New Zealand and I love that plant. And I saw that picture again and I thought, oh man, I'd love to get it. I wish, wish there was somebody, somewhere I could get it. And I thought, you know what? I know Sean goes to New, uh, New Zealand sometimes and he loves Pittosporum. Let me get in touch with him. So I called him up, asked him if he had the plant. And he said, yes, I've got the plant. I don't offer it, but let me, uh, let me root some for you. And, and I'll send you that with a few other things. And so just 
yesterday or the day before I got a confirmation that he was shipping a whole box full of pittosporums for the Arboretum. A lot of them, the ones he's shipping, we will certainly kill because not all of them are hardy for us, but we are going to plant them and, and see which ones do. He's got a great plant catalog, a lot of photos, but not as many as you'd like. A little bit of all kinds of things just kind of mixed up. You know, like I said, he does a lot of these southwestern things, so a lot of agave and oh my gosh, it's cactus. Every time I visited, we go into the cactus house and I'm afraid to move because it's so jammed full. And he's always like, do you want some of these? I'm like, yeah, maybe not. I just don't want to have to deal with them. But just all kinds of stuff to in there. And, you know, he puts what the best that he can tell in there for some of these things. Um, you know, but keep in mind that uh, some of these uh, some of these plants are uh, when he when you're on the north Pacific Northwest zone seven is different than than our zone seven so you know just just be careful of that but you know sometimes the stuff that they they put as zone eight we can do just fine because we get more more heat on there on them so. You know, be prepared to, to experiment. But yeah, always a great, great nursery and so much fun to, that's another, a great one to go visit. He also does design work out in, in the Portland area and does great stuff. Another good friend of the Arboretum. In fact, if you joined us for our Southeastern Plant Symposium, they joined us, Far Reaches Farm. Kelly Dodson and Sue Milliken. You want to talk about true plant nuts, they met on a plant collecting expedition and are now married and have a nursery in, in Port Townsend, Washington. They grow a little of everything. It really, I mean, such neat things. They're always so general, generous with us. But I've ordered uh, pleonies from my personal garden from them. They love rhodohypoxis, and I do too. Learn, trying to figure out how to get, grow them, dioramas, just so many things. And their list changes all the time. They, they're the nicest people. They are not always the most organized, but the plants they send are always great. And I will say, almost every plant I'm talking about, place I'm talking about, We'll do gift certificates. That's, you can, you can get gift certificates from these places, you know, to give to friends, to give to uh, spouses, to give to garden directors, you know, whatever you want. This is what I always, I don't, I don't want more stuff for my house. So what I always ask my family for, I'll, I'll give them a list of three or four different nurseries and say, give me a gift certificate from them. And that's always, that's always great because you get the gift certificate, you know, your birthday, Christmas, Father's Day, whatever it is. And hey, it's exciting. And then, you know, you might order your plants right then. You might order your plants till a more appropriate time of year, you know, depending on when your birthday is. And so then when you do that, you get to go visit the, gar you know, the, the catalog website. And, you know, it's exciting. And then when the plants show up, you know, it's exciting. It's like getting presents, you know, three or four times. It's, it's so much fun. I love it. And then you don't feel guilty about spending, you know, an extra 
however much on them because you got half of those for free, right? With your gift certificate. You know, a lot of these places, you know, you can shop in different ways. You can, you know, if you have, if you only want native plants, sometimes you can do plant origin. Deer resistant plants. Let me tell you, if you think you have deer problems, go to Port Townsend. We drove from their nursery to a little restaurant, maybe a couple miles away. And in just about everybody's backyard, front yard, wherever, they had big old deer sleeping, laying down, nibbling on things. I have never seen deer like I saw on at Port Townsend. But see, you know, you can get these, you know, all these great deer resistant plants. I should remember this. I didn't even know, but I, yeah, I grow this ajuga and you know something? The deer don't eat it. They eat the, the hosta that's right beside it. You know, alliums, deer resistant, erysemas. Yeah, all kinds of great deer resistant plants. So there's a lot of, you know, you can learn a lot from there. Digging Dog Nursery, Ugh, this website. You know, I, I, it boggles my mind. Nurseries sell one of the most beautiful products that anybody could offer. And then they do this on their website. This is the kind of website that, you know, kind of turns me off, but they do have great plants. So, you know, whatever it is you're, you're into. Where are they, Mark? Uh, digging dog is there in California, California. You know, they've got some pictures, some line drawings, which I don't get. Why <laughs> just take, go take a picture, but they do a lot of, you know, both woodland type plants and mostly uh, perennials, but they do have trees and things as well. A lot of them have genus lists. I think JC would like that. He always liked lists. So plant people, plant people like to show off all the stuff they have. So they, they do their lists, lists like this. But, um, really good stuff. A lot of it's, you know, more for the West Coast. Choisias and Sistas are a little bit better out there than for us. But, you know, they have a little, all kinds of different things out there that, that are pretty cool. All right, keeping it moving. I've got so many of these. Arrowhead Alpines. I love their slogan, rare plants for obsessive gardeners. You know, you look at that and a lot of people think, well, in the Southeast, we don't need Alpines but really they grow, they grow everything. They don't just grow uh, alpines. You see it right here. They grow our native erysema trifilum. These are all, these are their woodland plants right here. So you can get woodland plants and they, in their catalog, a lot of times they'll do, they'll do these bulk woodland wildflowers. So, you know, this says 6550, but what that is, is how many? You know, that's 24, you know, uh, 96, you can get, you know, there you go for 96, 218. So it's great if you want to, like if you want wildflowers and you really want a big display of them, you can get them. You know, sixty-five dollars for twenty-four erysema is not is not too bad. But if you you know if you wanted to do a mass of of hepaticas, uh, let's see, that's so sixty-five fifty. That is for twenty-four of them, same thing. So that's a really good deal. But you can also, well, maybe they're only doing bulk right now. Hmm. 
Daphne, usually they have a big list, but maybe they have, either they're not selling right now or, I don't know. There we go, this is what I'd normally see. So one of the things that I love personally are species peonies. So I've ordered quite a few peony species from them over the years. They've got, let's see, shrubs, perennials, you know, so it isn't, you know, when you're talking about Budlia, it's not all What am I trying to say? It's not all alpine plants. So you can see, you know, they've got in here, you can get just, you know, one or two for 19, but they give you, they give you discounts when you order more. So if you're better than me and don't order your plants, plant and drifts of one, but if you actually like to landscape with sweeps and things, you can get them for cheaper by by adding it. So, you know, Buxus, if that's your thing, they've got some cool ones. But just all kinds of, of, of plants, perennials, all kinds of perennials. A lot of them are focused for the alpine. So things like asperulas that they have here, a more wild wood, uh, alpine plants. But a lot of their stuff has actually done really well in the gardens when I've ordered from them. <clears throat> and they give you the best information they can. Kind of in that same vein, Edelweiss perennials. This is, uh, they grow a lot of, of kind of colder things. They're from, I think they're from Colorado, maybe. Maybe on the other side of the schedule, I can't remember. I'm not going to search through, but you know, they grow a lot. I like lilies. So that's one group that I've ordered from them. They've always come in really good, really nice. In fact, I just got this, the red form of Lilium canadense from them. I've in the past ordered this Lilium Duchardii from them. So they've, they've got some, some pretty cool things. But you can see all the things. You can look for plants that are fragrant, attract hummingbirds if you like cut flowers, you know, rabbit resistance, low water, you know, just all kinds of things that you can, you can sort by. And if you're like me and you're, you know, writing or articles and doing talks, sometimes I'll go to some of these websites and be, and, you know, be like, you know, oh, I'm talking about low water plants. Which, which, what do they have here? Let me put that in there as a, as a stick, as a, something to look through. Okay. One of the newer ones for me that I'm very excited about is this keeping it green nursery. I forget the, the person who owns this. But it's a, he's a young man. Here we go. I'm going to get his name because I think he's going to be something. He, this is in Washington. Arlen Hill. He's a young guy. He's doing amazing stuff here. One of their specialties are hardy orchids. So it drives me crazy that they don't have the names on them all. You got to put the, do this little pop-up thing on there. But... So he's got a lot of blatillas, including some pretty cool ones. He's got calanthes, the Kojima series. He's got the, he's got epic, uh, calanthe, ep, uh, cypripediums, you know, not cheap, but you know, orchids aren't cheap. Dactyl arises, good for kind of bog, boggy areas. If you've got a, you know, a little damp wetland area, the, the marsh orchids are great for that. The pleonies, I am going to be getting a bunch of these pleonies. They are marginally hardy, but 
you know, if you get them in the right spot, they'll do, they'll do really well. And they're so showy when they do very well. And I'm okay with some things dying, but he's, but that and his, he's got great ferns and a lot of woodland type perennials, which are great. Some of these peonies, the woodland ones, especially polygonatums, things like that. Uh, Podophyllums. I love his, his plants. So this is somebody that I have been, been ordering with and will continue for quite a while, I'm sure. Joy Creek, I have not ordered from Joy Creek in a while. They are great. Maurice and Mike are the owners. They're big old plant nuts. They're one of those group ones that they grow a lot of different things, but if you want to take a deep dive into some of the plants, you can. You can see that fuchsia is highlighted there. I was looking at what they were doing in fuchsia, the, their fuchsia offerings. Let's see. And boy, they offer a lot of fuchsias, but also see all these other things, erigerons, a lot of epimediums iriophyllums, but we'll get down to the fuchsias. Oh, I was excited about this when I was going through. You know, used to be you could get like these Euphorbia griffithii selections were really popular and Euphorbia martinii, and somehow they kind of went out of favor. You can't put them in too, too rich a soil or else they go just insane for us, but they love our heat and they're so showy. About 20 years ago, these were just the hottest thing, and they are not anymore at all. And I haven't been able to find them. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. And I will be getting some of those for my, for my own garden. But, you know, I really, we found a couple of fuchsias that work for us here. And I really want to try more and I am probably going to get in touch with them and see if we can get, make some kind of deal, maybe a trade for one of one or two of all of their fuchsias to stick in the ground and just see what they, what they do. See if some of them come alive or at least the ones that they list as zone seven. and see how they do. I think, I think it'll be a fun experiment. We probably put them mostly in the, the shade house. If I can get them to do that, we'll probably clear a bunch of space out of the shade house and see if we can get ones that will survive our summer as well as our winter. That would be, that would be the goal. But they have a lot that they list as zone seven, you know, they're, they're West coast. You never know if that's a real zone seven or not, but I definitely want to try it. And some that they have is zone eight. We've had this come back at the Arboretum. And so we're, we're hopeful that that's going to be a little bit hardier than people think. So we shall see, but it's been, a, like I said, it's been a while since I ordered from them. And I was, I was real pleased when I looked at their, their list again, I think I'm going to have to, have to try them again soon. Now, Isima plants, Isima is a real, is a great place. They've got a lot going on. They do design, got some kind of neat designs, but I don't know if these pictures would necessarily, if you just came to this, if you would necessarily think, oh yeah, this is the place I want to order plants from, you know, and then when you click on plants and these are the first two pictures you see kind of dirty and crowded and whatnot. I always love walking through greenhouses like this and, and, you know, kind of finding the, the little treasures in there. But I tell you what, their, their pictures don't necessarily inspire confidence, but they actually do send send good plants. 
So, you know, they got the mail order plants and you can see, yeah, this is the wrong time of year to be looking for them. A lot of things are sold out right now, but we'll get up new lists coming as we come into fall and, and then again in the spring, but they grow just a little bit of all kinds of different, different plants, you know, some of the plants we love here for sure. All right, I'm gonna look and see what they say about this one. I always check the astelias. They do not grow for us at all. An excellent container specimen. All right, so yeah, zone eight. They don't try and sell you something that they that won't work, but these are, this is another West Coast, West Coast place. Now I'll take you a little bit farther afield than the West Coast. Yuzawa Enge. Uh, Yuzawa Enge is a Japanese mail order nursery. If you prefer the website in Japanese, you can do that. Since I'm not very fluent at that, I don't, I can't do that. This is a nursery that I've never visited in person. I, I'd like to visit it. They're down near Yokohama, if I remember correctly. But they have cool stuff. Unfortunately, when they're not shipping, which they don't, they run a little bit behind. They're supposed to have a new, oh, a new seed list, the new plant list in September. So they don't ship over the summer and they don't even show you what they have during this time of year, which is unfortunate, but you can see in the, the seed lists, some of the, some of the stuff they have. And I, uh, I put in a big order for seeds that for things to grow out here at the, the, the Arboretum and I've ordered plants from them and the plants come in great shape. Now you do have to have a, an import permit for the plants. I'm not sure if you do for the seed, but you do for, if you grow, if you order plants from them. So the minimum order is 2000 yen. So that's not a, that's not too much money, but they, I, uh, the last order I got from them was kind of late spring this year. I ordered a bunch of stuff for myself. I, and it's, and it's because, you know, I was ordering a lot of things that are pretty iffy that I wouldn't want to spend the Arboretum's money on. So all the ones that do well, I will be bringing in and sharing with the Arboretum, dividing and bringing in. But the plants, they do, do a lot of weird variegated plants. Um, they, uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've gotten, trying to remember what my last door was, Bomerias and Ardesias and variegated Alliums and, and just, just all kinds of, of wild stuff. So I, I love them. It is expensive because you are, they are shipping from Japan. So, and they charge you the shipping fee. So you order and you pay for the plants. And then when they, they ship it, they charge you then for the rest, for the, the actual shipping costs. So, you know, it can be almost as much as the plants themselves, depending on what you're ordering. But always have had very good uh, success with them. And actually I have, I've reached out to them and asked if they could find certain plants for me and they've occasionally been able to do that. So really, really cool. Mark? So now get into a few of the more... Um, Mark? Yeah. Before we move on, Kathy's asked, is it 
something that they can do to get the import permit or is that really just for institutions and nurseries and special folks? Anybody can get an import permit. You have, you go through the USDA. It's the same process. It's like the JC Ralston Arboretum does not have an import permit. I have an import permit. Now it puts my, my business as JC Ralston Arboretum, but you don't have to have a, a, like a business license or anything like that. Something I have considered offering for our members is, is perhaps to do uh, an order on my permit from a place like Uzawa Enge. I'm just not sure. I think the, where I would be concerned is you know, I, we couldn't be liable for plants that didn't do well when they got, you know, when they arrived to people's gardens. But, you know, I did think about that because it is kind of a pain to get a, get import permits and they've become much more difficult to use in recent years to get a permit that's actually usable for anything. But it would be something that, you know, it might put that offer out at some point if people were interested to order from Uzawa Enge and it would have to be a prepayment kind of thing. But if that's something that's interesting, you know, let, let me or Chris know and we'll see how that might work. So, like I said, we're moving into more of the, a little bit more kind of specialty stuff. High Creek Gardens, High Country Gardens has changed a bit and I almost left them out. I used to order a lot from them and I don't now because I can't stand their website. I think maybe they've made it more user friendly for some people, but I want a list of all your plants. And it's, you know, you got to kind of dig through to find it, but they, they are focused on kind of, you know, kind of high desert, if you will. So a lot of their plants are very cold tolerant, but also they really, they really focus on drought tolerance. Now that's not every plant will be drought tolerant, but that's what a lot of them will be. They do a lot of pollinator plants. They do a lot of meadow plants. So it's, it's kind of a neat place and, you know, you can get them pretty inexpensively for, you know, a, you know, small pots. They do most things in small pots, which I also love. Um, I like getting these, small plots and some of them i'm trying to see if this is one sometimes they give you discount if you order you know more than 10 of them or something like that doesn't look like they do with this one. Oh well i'm not going to dig through there but but they send really good plants we use them for some of our plants in our flowering lawn because we could get small plants that we wanted. Um, so they were pretty good. There are some wholesale nurseries that, you know, if you're ordering 18 or 36 of one thing, you can order. I didn't put them on here, so they're not on here or the list, but Bluebird Nursery is a good one for that. I don't think I put them in there, no. But yeah, high country garden, especially if you really want drought tolerant or meadow type plants. Okay, Annie's, they've, they've changed their name. They were, there were always Annie's annuals, but now they're Annie's annuals and perennials. They've always sold perennials as well as annuals. It's a great place to visit. It's just this big wide open spot with just tables and tables and tables of of plants and you know a lot of it is 
they do have a lot of annuals. A lot of them are like self-seeding annuals or really unusual annuals and biennials and tender perennials, uh, you know, things like abutilons, you know, and these aeoniums. These are perfectly, these are perfectly perennial plants, but just not if you put them in the ground here in Raleigh, they will not survive a winter. But, you know, where else are you going to get your agristemas? You know, a great plant. Not hardy here. It self sows, you know, not necessarily in in Raleigh, you could, but you can collect the seed and re-sow it if you want. And they just, it's just this long, long list. You know, especially you look at it in spring and it's just page after page after page, you know, hollyhocks and, you know, they have some woody things in there. And, you know, since they sell mostly small plants, this is one of these plants that's really hot. People love it. The blue diamond impatiens. It's, it is a perennial impatien, but it's not hardy, you know, but it does, it does reseed in most areas, even, even here, I've seen it, I actually I've seen it in zone six uh, reseeding. So, uh, you know, cool things like that. Some people love reseeding annuals, you know, they kind of move around in the gardens and do different things. Some people hate reseeding annuals because they want a plant to stay where they put it. I tend to be of the latter category because I, uh, if it moves around, then it, it'll move away from the little label that I put in front of it. But they just do a lot of very, very cool plants at, at Annie's Annuals. So it's, uh, it's, it's well worth going. You see, you can see heucheras and things like that as well. A lot of, a lot of the stuff that people used to grow a lot of, but they don't because people don't collect seed and re-sow so much, you can, you can find with Annie's Annual. So definitely worth worthy place to look, for, look at. So how about natives? A lot of the places that I've already talked about sell a lot of natives. In fact, right here, Plant Delights Nursery is one of the best sources for native plants anywhere in the country especially southeastern natives. This nursery, Wood Source Natives, somebody, a friend of mine from Blacksburg, Virginia, pointed them out to me. They're right by in Floyd, Virginia. And they're growing just Appalachian, native Appalachian plants. Ian Catton, the owner, is supposed to uh, he was supposed to be at, at our Ralston Blooms plant sale. He was also going to speak at the Southeastern Plant Symposium. We're going to have him speak 2021 at the Southeastern Plant Symposium. But he's just growing neat things that you wouldn't find anywhere else. These woodland plants. Really excited about, about having him down and having him offer some of these these great plants that, you know, where, where else do you get your Brichelia and your Betula lenta? That's not often found. And that's a great tree. You know, marsh marigolds, truly marsh marigolds and not ranunculus, but just neat stuff. Love what he's, he's doing out there. You know, leather leaf, leather flower, wild yam. So whether you just want to flower a uh, garden with native plants or you, uh, you know, you want to restore an area or you just want to mix them in with the other things you want, you know, pretty things like Philippendula to mix in with the other things you're growing. You know, you got, you should look in them for them. You know, I had looked for some of these 
bottle enclosed gentians for a long time. And boy, you could sometimes find saponaria and sometimes find andrusii, but you know, he's got alba as well. Love it. I love what he's doing. Another one, nearly native nursery. Isn't this great? You can do your website once in 1996 and never change it again, which is what it seemed like they have done here. For them, for nearly native, you need to, I, I believe you might have to down, oh no, no, not now. Sometimes you used to have to download their, their, Um, what their list. So now you can you can do it this way and click on the the number over there to see more about it. If they weren't such a great place to get native plants, I wouldn't even show you this because it is an awful awful well website. They're down in Georgia, but they, you know, they grow plants that are native in a lot of areas. Like, you know, if you like palms, they grow a bunch of the native palms. You know, it's a three gallon. I don't know if there's a minimum, um, if they'll ship a three gallon. It may just be one, the one gallons and smaller that they ship. I've only ever ordered things for in one gallon or small, smaller. It says that they're growing it in their zone seven garden. They're not zone seven where they are. They're farther south in, in Georgia than that. But, you know, for people who like to experiment, they definitely, definitely would be worth it. You know, for me, I have to go back and sort by botanical name because otherwise it throws me off. But, but they're, they're great. You can get a lot of great things there. And they ship their plants better for, than they do a website. Some more, kind of more specialty um, when you start getting into specific types. I'm um, sure plenty of you know about Britain, Britain Becky's plants, but one thing I, I'd like to point out is if you go to their fundraising page or you go to, come on now, their Bloomin' Bucks page. If you type in bloominbucks.com, that's Brent and Becky, you can go there and you can select whatever organization you want, such as the J.C. Ralston Arboretum, and then go, and then I'll sell you this. This is, their Bloomin' Bucks programs will support us. Every, when every dollar you spend with them, we get, um, we get a little bit, but if you if you're doing the blooming brooks because they they give us actual money for it, you you can't get any you don't get discounts if there are discounts as, if available. So you can look at their regular website and see if you their discounts are there, or you can go into that blooming bucks, and you know go to their regular category uh, catalog and you know every time you order something. The arboretum gets gets a little bit mon of money. So if you, you know, are growing, you know, your narcissus, you want to just a mix, you know, and you're getting five thousand um, bulbs, you know, and spending four thousand dollars, you know, we'll we'll get we'll get a little bit from that. I saw the smartest thing. I I should have grabbed a a, a image of it. Smartest thing for planting bulbs. It was one of the tree cedar planters. So, you know, a handle, long bar, and then kind of a, a sharp wedge that you stick in the ground and wiggle back and forth. And it's what, it's what Brent Heath uses to plant the, 
bulbs when he does big plantings like this and then somebody goes behind and drops the bulb in well this was one i saw that had somebody had zip tied pvc tube to that seedling planter and so you could open your own hole instead of having somebody follow behind you you could just drop the bulb in yourself down the the tube it was it was genius but whatever you're getting brent and becky are great friends every year they at the end of shipping season they get in touch with us and say we've got whatever we have left over you're welcome to us and other other gardens as well it's not just us and we go up and we bring them a bunch of plants for their display garden trees and shrubs and they load us up with a bunch of of great bulbs to plant out so they really are so they got the blooming bucks to support us and then also these other you know they they support us with with bulbs uh, summer bulbs and and fall bulbs and they're just wonderful people too so and they're great to go visit another bulb company that kind of a little bit different is talos rare bulbs from out in california and they do a lot of the western u.s south america and south african bulbs not so much of the the Asian bulbs, although they do some, but I mean, you see right here, they've got four pages of oxalis. So they grow these weird oxalis species. They don't give great descriptions. They don't give you a whole lot of, you know, information. You know, you can see a little bit of oxalis, but, you know, they don't tell you how hardy they are. They don't tell you anything like that. So you either have to do some digging in other areas or, you know, roll the dice and, and gamble on, on what you're getting. But their, their prices are, are pretty cheap. Often for the really small bulbs, they, they don't even offer individuals. You can only get them three, you know, like three for $6. So, you know, that's, that's pretty inexpensive. But, you know, they do have uh, one of the only places you can get some, some things. You know, it's hard to get albucas. And sometimes they're what you think you're going to, they don't go to. This is supposed to go to Gloriosas. I don't see any Gloriosas in this list, but you know, look at that plant, that ornithogalum. You know, pretty cool, huh? Even if you're growing it as a house plant. But yeah, you know, they're, they're a place where you can get some stuff you can't find anywhere else. Brodias and Diclostemas and other weirdo plants like that. Uh, we like them. Conifers, you know, there are a lot of nurseries that sell conifers. Some are great, some are not. Conifer Kingdom has always been very good with the, the plants that the conifers I've gotten from them, I haven't really ordered much much else from there, but I like one, you know, I like that they break it down, you know, this kind of way. I'm, we have, you know, gotten miniature conifers from them for our, our miniature conifer mound. So, you know, we were, you know, you could sort that way and find these little plants. Some of their plants are smaller, some of them are larger. Uh, they will ship pretty good sized plants. And, you know, when you're talking about these miniature ones, you're getting a, a one gallon container container with a good sized plant. This is not a brand new fresh graft. So price can be a little bit pricey. Also, 
be aware whenever you're buying dwarf conifer, dwarf conifers, they do not grow like this for in the Southeast. Nothing, no conifer grows one to two inches a year. In 10 years, this plant is going to be bigger than two by three feet. I can almost guarantee it. They just, they tend, they grow bigger for us than they do in the, in New England and out West. But if you wanted columnar plants, maybe you take away the growth weight. Let me try this again. So you want columnar. I don't know how to get off my miniature. Here we go. So we could get large, you know, you want to block, you hate your neighbors. You grow large pyramidal plants you know, that are going to block them. You know, you can find that. I should notice here, I haven't, I didn't really talk about this, but on, in Dave's garden, if you, if you ever Google plants, you'll probably Dave's garden will come up. That's a kind of a user sub, submitted kind of thing. Sometimes often good information, sometimes not good information because it's reliant on its users to get there. But part, one of their parts is Garden Watchdog. And this, if you go to Garden Watchdog, if you're trying out a new mail order nursery, Garden Watchdog will have, have its ratings for that nursery. Make sure you don't just look at the last few ratings or, or things like that. Keep in mind, people rate bad more than they rate good. If you have a bad experience, you want to tell everybody about it. If you have a good experience, you just keep going on doing what you're doing. So keep that in mind when you look at some, some people's comments on there. You know, it, it's because people say anything, you know, I always love, if you want entertainment, read the negative reviews about Plant Delights Nursery, who does a great job mail order. They're one of the best in the country, but you get in there, you know, you know, people say, you know, I got the plant and I planted it and, you know, my dog peed on top of it every day for two weeks and now they won't replace my plant even though it died or even better. I won't shop there ever again. I'm a, I'm a liberal and he has all kinds of conservative stuff on his, his catalogs. And then the one after that says, you know, I'm a, a conservative and I won't, there he's got all kinds of liberal stuff or whatever, you know, both sides of the coin on there arguing about it. So it has nothing to do with the plants they got, but that's somewhere you can go is that garden watchdog. It's a great place. Salvias. I, I'm putting in just a couple of these, these specialty places just to kind of get, get your appetite for some of those. Flowers by the sea is a salvia nursery. They grow a few salvia related plants, but almost all salvias. So they're a great place to get. If you want sages, they're a great place to, to find them. They don't always put, you know, hardiness on there, but you can get, you know, you can do it by size, exposure, that kind of thing. But it's, you know, they are encyclopedic with, with sages. So if you like a certain type of salvia, you can, you know, you can certainly probably find cultivars of it here. A lot of stuff. We've been using them mostly because a colleague in, in China has been wanting sages. And so I get them from him, for him and he comes and he takes cuttings of them and leaves us the plants or he gets blocked from coming by COVID. And so he doesn't come at all. And we have a bunch of sages that we get to y'all, but they've been really, really good to work with. Oh, I put one seed place. I put rare palm seed in there. I had stayed away from seed places cause like Johnny seeds and things like that. But if you, if you are nut for plants that 
you really should not be able to grow around here. You know, if you want to try some palms and things like that, like some of the Livestonas are, are hardier than we give them credit for. You can get seed for fairly cheap. So for this Livestona alfredii. Do you need a permit for seeds? You technically, yes. If they're coming from out of country, you, you don't with rare palm seed. They're, they're, they're shipped from, the, I've never, they've never asked me for one. So I don't know about them. Should, you don't need, you don't need inspections. The, the, you, they don't need to go through USDA inspections if it's less than 50 seed, 50 different types of seed fewer than 50 seed per pack. So I don't think you need to, they are from Europe, but yeah, I've never, I'm trying to see if they say that here. I'm pretty sure you don't. Uzawa Endgame, they, you may from them but I, I don't remember. And I'm sorry, I haven't ordered from, from rare palm seed in a few years. And I don't think about it much because I just send them a copy of, of my, my, my uh, permit. But per, like I said, permits, anybody can get permits. And there are other, you know, specialty places like this is the Lily Garden. They only sell lilies. There are a lot of these specialty places and a lot of them that I don't, you know, I don't order daylilies. So I don't know about daylily nurseries very well. So I love Martagon lilies. So I've ordered from them more than once. They do some peonies. I've never done their peonies, but their lilies have always been very, very good. geraniace.com. They sell nothing but geraniums, erodiums, and pelargoniums, all things, all the geraniaceae plants. And they grow a lot of them. You can get annual ones, you can get, you know, the ground covering types. And I love, I love perennial geraniums. I love them, love them, love them. My biggest problem with this nursery is can't decide which ones to buy when I'm ordering from them. I think they are underutilized in our gardens. I think they're amazing. These ground covering tight ones like these are beautiful. And then, you know, you go to the, the big scramblers, the ones that get larger and will wind around other things. Love this as well. A lot of them do well in shade for us, even though they may say some in here. If you, if you like the pelargoniums, the, the things that, you know, like the zonal geraniums and scented geraniums and the fancy leafed geraniums, some of these geraniums have like blue in the flowers. They, they are, some of them are just so cool. This Crystal Palace gem is one I used to always use in uh, annual displays. It's a really good one. Uh, I mean, look at this, Mr. Henry Cox. I mean, look at the, it's crazy. I don't like these type of geraniums, the pelargoniums, the zonal type or bedding geraniums personally, but there are some pretty cool ones. And you can get some of the species that grow in, you know, from South Africa and weird things. These, they call them uniques. If you're into them, boy, there's, there's a lot of stuff you can, you can grow uh, from them. But so if you have a certain thing, you know, seek them out. There's probably a nursery that sells them. Or if you love 
clematis and other vines, brushwood down in Georgia. They're great. Great information too, you know, they'll tell you what type you're getting and tell you how to prune it. I can, it takes a special kind of person to have a, a nursery that does nothing but uh, vines because vines are a pain in the nursery to grow. But you know, they, they have the JCRA Morning Calm, Hampsus sold out, but Obelia. I have sent them vines from our collecting trips for them to, to try out and see if they want to grow. They, they do neat stuff. The neat guy, he was from up in, uh, he was at Longwood for quite, quite a long time and, and then went down to start this, start Brushwood Nursery. Very neat, um, neat stuff. Go away. I'm gonna close some of these. Another great one for, if you like to eat plants, my father didn't see any reason to plant anything unless he could eat the fruit on there. So edible landscaping, a great one for that. They've got all kinds, you can get mushrooms, you got, you know, the things that you can integrate into your landscape, you know, dogwoods and eleagnus and currants and feoa, pineapple guava. Oh, they only have one. Keep waiting for them to get more of those. You can get your goji berries, you know, all kinds of things like that. So, you know, things you can put into your landscape. You know, you can do, you know, if you like citrus or coffee, you can grow those, not necessarily outside, but they've got some pretty good information about things, you know, produced fruit after 16 degrees Fahrenheit and below freezing for 36 hours, you know, that's, that's pretty good to know. How old was the plant? That would be nice to know as well, because it may not have been that old, but just lots of Lots of different things. So, you know, if you want jujubes, you want mulberries, olives, you know, get your selection at edible landscaping. Tropicals, uh, there are probably a ton of places to, to find tropical plants. I don't know many of them because I haven't visited, I, I haven't ordered a lot of tropical plants. I used to order some from Glasshouse Works when I was had a con worked with a conservatory. I visited them for the first time a few years ago. I'd never visited there. And they told me the uh, two, two stories they told me there. They're in Ohio. I was going to give a talk in Ohio. That's why I stopped by. And the owner told me a story about JC used to stop by there every year, he said, and he would always have been visiting a bunch of nurseries and would always have too many plants in his car. And so he would just plant plants on their property there at Glasshouse Works. And so he would show me some of the plants that JC had planted there, you know, 30 and 40 years ago, which was, which was very cool. But then he also told me about getting a visit from this, this young, young guy from I think he was still a college student from at NC State. He said he came into the first greenhouse and, you know, all, there's all this, this place is like a falling down wreck. And it must have been that way 40 years ago too. It is a jungle with all these little greenhouses and, you know, they've got benches, but then under the benches are all kinds of plants as well. And he said, this guy, this young man came in and start was on his hands and knees under the benches, like just looking through everything. He said he went like the first house, he was under the, in there for about two hours and came out and said, okay, I finished looking under the benches. And I want to look at the top. And of course, that was Tony Avent when he came to visit him. And he said he used to come up and find all kinds of things. They are doing great right now because so many people are buying plants indoors. Something that has made a lot of places like Glasshouse Works and other nurseries better about packaging and shipping plants is YouTube. People do these 
un, unpacking videos. They're very popular. My daughter watches them about makeup. We get about all kinds of things, but they have unpackaging videos for for uh, plants. And they told me that they they had to repackage their plants because when people do those videos, they've got to come open up and not have all kinds of you know soil and kinds of things like that. So just neat neat plants all around. You could spend days wandering through their their houses there. They're great. Another one, logies. They also do fruiting plants, but tropical plants. A lot of plants at, at logies. They're, they've, they've got both perennials and and tropicals. Pretty good stuff there. Top tropicals is another one for. They do a lot of larger size ex exotic plants fruit trees, all kinds of things. It's, I, I got to say, I, it's been a long time since I've ordered from them. So, but I know a lot of people like fruit, so I wanted to put that on there. Now, something I was just told about right before we got started was this University of Minnesota site where you can search for a plant. Let's see, I've searched for Osmanthus. Oh, you can get, you can go even deeper into it. Let's say I want Osmanthus suavis. You can search it. And they've got 900 nurseries and 80,000 plants. And it was found in one nursery. So it's found at Woodlanders. There you go. That's where I've gotten it before from Woodlanders. I should have known. And then I'll have one citation. But you know, it's, it's a pretty cool resource. So if you're looking for plants online, that's a, a great way to go. So that is not on the handout that I made, but it's plant info, plant information online, or you just plant info and you'll get to it. So very cool thing. I didn't put the garden watchdog site on here, but you can find that as well. Oh, this went longer than I thought, but I will end up with our, what's on our cart. If you haven't learned how to get there, you go to horticulture, go to sales, go to plant bug, sale buggy, and you can see what's on the cart. Agave Shadidra Shiret Ito no Ohi. A great variegated agave, not real hardy, but gorgeous in a pot. This Texas crag lily, I love this. This picture is not doing it justice. It's a little strappy, it looks like a little grass, and then it sends up these spikes of orange flowers. It's been hardy here. It says 7B here, but it's been just fine here for many, for quite a few years. And it is such a cool plant, I love it. I will actually be buying one off the cart tomorrow myself. We have another fig, Ficus alma, which is a great one. A hosta, blonde ambition have one gallon dwarf white crepe myrtles. This is a great one. It, it doesn't seem to form seed very well, so it really blooms long. The giant cucumber magnolia, one of our great native trees, yellow flowers. They come after the, the leaves appear, really. A great phlox, variegated ground cover pepper, and our own collection of Sarissa japonica it used to be Sarissa fetida because the leaves kind of stink when they are bruised. We put a name on this bumblebee delight because down in our Asian Valley, this plant flowers all summer and has more pollinators on it than any other plant in the arboretum. It's just incredible how many flowers are on it. Whew, man, that was a, that was a lot of nurseries. But, you know, I know people are interested in all kinds of different things. So I didn't want to shortchange anybody. And every time I kept trying to take one off, I kept putting on two more. <laughs> there are so many great nurseries right now. So Chris has put a, a link maybe in the, in the chat and also says 
you can email him directly. His email's on our website, so um, you can get that. Rare finds nursery, I see that in, for, I used to love rare finds nursery. I don't know what their situation is now. The last couple times I dealt with them, they had gotten rid of their propagator. There had been a fire that had, they had lost a bunch of their greenhouses and they were just buying things in and reselling and weren't doing a lot of propagating. I have not been to their website and looked at what they're doing in, in the last year or two, so, but they may be good. I'm just seeing them in the chat. Oaks in Tennessee, the daylilies. Yeah, there are a lot of daylily nurseries. I don't order from any of them because uh, <laughs> for reasons. Somebody asked me about Nature Hills Nursery. I have heard of them. I've never ordered from them. So I don't, I, I only put things in that I could speak of confidently with from my own experience. Question about how do you get an import permit? You go to the USDA website and try to find your way around. Go to plant importation and you just got to work at it until you can figure it out. It is not easy. Mark? Izell plants, I don't know them, but that's cool. I'll have to look at that. Yep. Sounds like Jim has a question. Yep. Um, just for the people on farther south, Conifer Kingdom does sell some of their furs on firma stock. Yes. So that is helpful. Yes. Yeah. If you're getting a, a fur, ABS firma, I mean, ABS, any ABS, if you can get it on ABS firma rootstock, it'll do much better for you in the South. Davies Firma has a, is a much more heat tolerant phytophthora resistant rootstock for furs. And so do it on there is great. Kirk asked about rare roots. If you know anything about that one. Rare roots. I don't know that one. I don't know it either. But I'm taking note of all, these places <laughs> and hopefully I'll you know I'll start visiting them and I'd love to hear about other other places people know uh, so Izell plants is not a grower it's, it looks like they take they do mail order from other companies they they kind of facilitate mail order from like wholesale and retail nurseries or flats of plugs. I have not grown them, but that'll be, that'll be interesting to see them. I like the idea of getting plugs. Yeah, I do too. I mean, it's great. And rare roots. I don't know. I'm... I did see on their site that you can't quite price things yet. You have to type in your zip code and they're not shipping here yet. So later in August, it looks like. At Rare Roots? Uh, no, the ISIL. ISIL, okay, yeah. And one other thing. Yep. Has anybody, does anybody know anything about Garden Vision Epimediums? Oh yeah, yeah, Garden Vision Epimedium. Garden Visions, that was Daryl Pro. Probst's place. I haven't ordered from them in a while. I don't know if, if I, I think, I can't remember if, if Daryl is still there or if he has, if his ex-wife is now has it, but it doesn't matter. They, they grow. Well, that Go ahead. I believe it's yeah. his ex-wife. That's what I thought. The, the e near my sister, so I've seen her. The email says Karen at epimediums.com. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's it. And it was Daryl Probst and his wife started it. He's doing something 
I'm not sure exactly what he's doing now, but, but um, they have so they, they are the ones to go to for. for man, everything. they have they have some astounding leaf forms as well as bloom forms. So yeah, yeah, they're great. Um, Thank you. Yeah, and I variegated foliage nursery in Westford, Connecticut. I don't know that dancing oaks. Somebody put on there. Dancing oaks is is great as well they're one that i should have put on there but i i missed I, I don't know variegated foliage nursery though it sounds like the owner has passed away and usually when that happens the nurseries disappear they're they're mostly a you know a labor of love for people Anything else? Well, this was great. I, you know, I'm four or $500 poorer now, <laughs> but you know, what can you do? Any other questions before we go? I didn't see anything else in the chat, Mark. It certainly was great. I was telling folks I was following along on a second computer, looking at uh, what each nursery had as you went along. It was wonderful. Yeah, there, there's some really good nurseries out there. And I, I, people are afraid of, of ordering bail order, but don't be, you know, small, you get small plants usually, but small plants established in a garden so much better than the big overgrown root bound things that you often get from retail nurseries. <laughs> Not, not from, you know, any of our benefit providers, of course, but it's, it's a great way to kind of get some different things that you can't find otherwise. Marilyn, just thank you. Thank you for your sacrifice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just <laughs> don't tell my wife or else there'll be a real sacrifice. <laughs> uh <-oh. laughs> she thinks all the plants come free from the arboretum. So uh, we, we, we don't tell her otherwise. We won't tell her otherwise. We'll have to, we'll have to print you some arboretum name tags for them, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all. Y'all have a good week, and I will see you next week to talk about some Cyrex and Snowbells. Have a good week, everyone. <laughs>